Okay, so how to use the QLib? Yeah, sure. So the QLib here, let me just pop up the pop up the screen. So the view that you may have, so I have a lot of scenes. Let me just fold everything. That's uh so in the QLib here you will have uh this on the left represent folders. So this public folder is everything that is public uh, and that you can access. You will see slightly less number of folders because uh, you need some rights in order to see all these folders. But one of the folders you will see all the time is tutorial. So in tutorial you can explore, you can explore everything that is available. Uh, you have some data reference, data access. So everything is listed in there. Uh, payouts. So, for example, minimum rebalancing frequency, we've seen that. Uh, all of these are functions. If you click on view here, this will open the second panel here. This panel is where you can see uh, all the functions. So here you have the code. You can directly either read the code or up, click it, put it in the art studio, if that's what you want to do, and work with it. You know, maybe maybe this function is good, but you didn't like the fact that here we're doing something, uh, something that you don't want to do. Just erase it and start working. Yeah. Do your own version. So th there is some flexibility in terms of having directly all the code. You can read it. You can understand the logic. Uh, there should be also a wiki tab here, which is standard and where you will see wait, what's what's expected. It's uh, an XTS of weight. We've covered during the, the webinar. XTS is a data structure for time series. And uh, it's also asking for returns. And it's waiting for, it's, it's awaiting uh, an XTS returns. And lastly, a threshold. So this is uh, what, I, what I spoke about before, that each time that your weight drifts away from your target, then it will rebalance. So. You can read the documentation in the wiki tab. You can take just the example. You do, if you don't understand how the how the function works, you just go here. You copy this. You go in your in your script. You just uh, and then you can directly direct, directly uh, you know uh, execute that in your console to see the behavior uh, of the function. It's a pretty flexible way to um, to basically browse, to, to look into the library and to check what's available. Uh, as I said here, everything that is public, you can, you can do exactly the same as this. Uh, let me cover quickly this bottom bottom folder, the bottom folder with your name, so that's my username, Hervé. And in here, all these functions that I have uh, are only for me. So this is when I when I work only for myself. I just put the function in there, and I'm the only one to to be able to see this uh, to see this function. So what's go what's good here is that if uh, we look at it here, you, you have a revision table. The revision is going to have all your changes to this function uh, basically registered and saved. So that's a, a version control if you're using Git somewhat like that. Uh, it's keeping all the versions. So that's good if you're making a mistake, if you're uh, modifying your function, you're, you're putting it in, in, in the QLib, and then you realize, oh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, it was better before, then you can revert back to a previous version. And if you're part of the team, yeah, I'm part of the team uh, Optimal, then uh, I can put my function here in this team, and then uh, every member of this team will uh, will be able to access this function. Okay, so access right. We are only two in this team, and all all members of that team can see the, the function. So every time they go and uh, they here in the in your environment, you, you do source QLib. Basically, it's going to load all the functions that you have. In the in your team folders and all your teammates can access them, so it's really a, a layered approach, public, team, private, 
and uh, and a way to browse either code uh, or documentation for functions and uh, directly start coding by copying them in your IDE. So I hope that that's covering roughly how, how to use the Qlib. Uh, usually you'll see that um, uh, you, you have references when needed in the documentation also, so that's pretty good to, to check. And uh, often if you need to go a bit more in detail, uh, for example, minvar, uh, you will have some, uh, some references here. Uh, they're telling me at the bottom that I should go and see this page. Okay, so I can go and and change it and go there and see this page. So this is more of a browsing library, like a library center where you can browse every capability of the of the platform. Uh, last thing to note here, uh, if I close this one, I can look what uh, what's there. Yeah. We go. and then access the function. Uh, you also need to know that uh, for uh, the Alphaton, we require you to put your payout, your portfolio payout within the Qlib so that we are able to replicate it. Uh, it's, uh, it's a nice way to centralize all the, the things you have developed. I hope that covers your question. Uh, I think we are a bit over time now. So uh, let's close it here. And uh, thank you everyone for, for attending and we're waiting your questions in the alpha chat or on the forum. Have a good day.